My favorite animal is the hedgehog. I first remember reading about hedgehogs in Beatrix Potter's book, Mrs. Tiggywinkle. I loved how Mrs. Tiggywinkle's prickles stuck through her clothes. Then when I was a little older and I read Alice in Wonderland, Alice plays croquet with flamingos as mallets and hedgehogs as croquet balls. The game became an adventure when the hedgehogs unrolled and walked away, not like a real ball at all. The thing that appeals to me is that the hedgehog is a wild creature that humans can observe. It doesn't run away like a deer or have teeth and claws like a wildcat because it's perfectly protected. It just rolls in a ball and its prickles do the rest. The first time I saw a hedgehog was at an animal sanctuary called St. Tiggywinkles in England. I got permission to visit when I was doing the research for The Mitten. I have lots of books with hedgehogs as characters and I think you'll find one in almost all of the books that I've written or retold. I'd like you to meet Astro, our new baby hedgehog. Come on Astro, he's only two months old. Our first hedgehog was Pudge and our second was Buffalo Gal. Hedgehogs live to be about eight years old. I hope you liked meeting our new hedgehog Astro. I'd like to draw you a picture of a hedgie. Why don't you follow along? I'm going to start with some basic shapes and then start over again and draw it the way I would draw it with all the details. Um, I would use a basic oval shape for a hedgehog and add a cone at the front. This is where his head's going to be. Nose will be here, eye, ear, and then we'll make this little part come up here. There's the basic shape. Now I'm going to start over again. And here's my oval, which I'm gonna do fairly lightly. And then this is where the little cone shape starts. And there the, <laughs> the rest of the oval is. Hedgehog is a very round little animal. Now the tip of a hedgehog's nose is shiny black and it's very sensitive. It can smell things a, a long way away and they always say, bond with your hedgehog, let it smell you, don't pick it up with gloves. And kids always ask me, are hedgies pricky, prickly? And I say, well, they, they are, especially babies are really sharp, they're, they're prickles. But as they get older, their prickles get a little bit duller. And when they're relaxed, their prickles lay down like a hairbrush and they don't feel prickly at all, but they get alarmed and they will stick those up because that's how they protect themselves. About here is where I'm gonna put the hedgehog's eye. And I always like to spend a lot of time with that eye because that's where we look to see what the character is thinking about because the eyes are so expressive. So I'll have this, what do you think he should be thinking about? Maybe he's at night, it's nighttime and he's gonna thinking about getting some food. So he's looking a little bit, look, he's looking forward to that. And this is the soft skin around his eye. And then hedgehogs have a little bit darker fur around their eye, kind of like a little mask. Not as much as a raccoon. And then of course our whiskers are attached right in, on their nose, because can you just imagine them sniffing along in the middle of the night and looking under leaves for something good to eat? Mostly insects, that's what they like the best. Actually, I've heard that the favorite food of a hedgehog are slugs, which are very bad for your garden. So that's why everyone likes to have a hedgehog there. And you may know this already, but hedgehogs don't live in North America. They live in Europe, Asia, and Africa. Our hedgehog, Astro, is an African pygmy hedgehog. It's a little bit smaller than the European hedgehog. And his prickles are, are sort of a sand color because he might live in a desert habitat where he would blend in. And this is the soft fur around his, his face. It's just like a guinea pig's fur. It's very soft. And then it turns a little bit of a lighter shade as it starts to meet the prickles. And I'm going to draw that because you often see that with the hedgehog is this little line of a lighter shade. This is where the prickles begin. 
Everybody wants to know how sharp those prickles are. They're sharp enough so that a fox came along and tried to pounce and sniff that hedgehog that it would stop right there because it would get its nose pricked by those hedgehogs. And also the way that a hedgehog protects himself is he rolls in a ball, tucks everything in his little feet, his nose, everything. He has a, um, around his body, he has a, a strong muscle that he pulls tight and then nothing shows. It's just prickles all the way around in a ball. So of course that makes a good um, character to write about because not everybody can curl up in a ball like that and be totally safe. And those prickles will take a long time to, to fill in. So I'll just do a few on the edge, on the edges, because you can imagine the rest. And they go every which way. And then his little feet will, of course, be at the bottom. And they do have tails. They're very small and very pink. <laughs> and here's Hedgie's Hedg little feet. With his claw, there's a little claw at the end of each toe. And he's walking along. So this one is in the background. We'll shade that in a little bit. And then this back foot is a little bit longer in shape than the front foot. And a hedgehog can walk along very quickly, but not so fast as a rabbit. And that's what makes them so interesting as wild animals, because you can observe them. And often people will say that they hear their hedgehog in their garden at night, because if someone leads a dish of dog food or something in the, in, out in the patio, they always like to lift it up and look underneath it because probably some little insect might crawl under there to keep cool and out of sight. But the hedgehog knows that trick and tips everything over. So you hear a clink, clunk, clank, and it could be a hedgehog in your garden. And do hedgehogs make noises? They certainly do. They make a little puffing noise. It sounds like, um, <laughs> like that. That's when they're afraid they do that. And when they do that, they make a little jump too. And so an animal might... Um, see that hedgehog making a little jump and jump back and give it a little bit extra room. I finished drawing my hedgehog and now I'd like to color him in. Now a hedgehog is kind of a soft brown color. Very pretty. There's his little muzzle. And of course his stomach would be the same color, maybe even a little bit lighter. And I'm going to make it a little darker around his eyes. So I'm mixing a little bit more of a brown in there. And his eyes almost look like shiny black beads. And then I want to make him look um, as if he's not flat but round. And I'll do that by putting a little bit of shadow underneath his chin and down his chest and between his toes. <laughs> make this one a little bit darker because that's in shadow. And then I'll follow along where I've made a few little uh, sketch marks indicating the fur. And I'll just continue on that with that little bit of a lighter brown that will go and then make him look like he's covered with fur. And then his little muzzle, I'm trying to define that a little bit because this part is a little bit poofy. It sticks out. And here's a trick. For some reason, when there's a reflection in, a, in the pupil of a character's eye, you just put a little tiny bit of blue. It gives it a realistic look. And I'm going to continue with that grayish blue color to make his ear. It's very soft. It looks like a little piece of felt, like you would find on your stuffed animals. <laughs> and then his prickles are really many colors. They're each little prickle, if you could take one out, it's got bands of brown and black and white on them. And I think that's one of the reasons he blends in so well with his environment. And the African hedgehog is a little bit lighter than the European hedgehog. And the European hedgehog is the one that I used in the mitten and the hat 
And had you surprised, because all the countries that those books were set in are European countries. Denmark for had you surprised, and let's see, there was, the mitten was in Ukraine. And what was the other one? The hat, Denmark too. Lots of hedgehogs in Denmark. They're very beloved there. So he started to take form, I hope. And of course, when I'm at my art table, putting those prickles in take a long time. But I don't mind. I like to, that's the time that I can kind of let my imagination go and think about maybe the next page that's coming along. And then an artist always needs to sign their name, and I'll use my like a dark blue color to do that. And my favorite thing, of course, is to see your drawing. So I hope that you'll make some time today and get out your art materials, whether it's pencils or colored pencils or markers or watercolors, and get working on your own creative project.